This video will go over mostly an overview of the embarkation and debarkation of the Disney Wish, as well as some random things throughout my trip. My trip took place from January 16th to the 20th of 2023. Arriving into the Port Canaveral area, the Disney Terminal is one of the first things you see on your left as you cross the bridge. Give yourself some time because there's typically traffic in this area. Here you can see the Disney parking garage where you can pay to leave your car during the duration of your cruise. The road loops around it and the drop off point is on the other side. As you loop around, you'll see the Disney terminal, which is that building with the clock in the background. There's a line of traffic to get in. Um, however, we were on a GoPort transfer bus, which took us from the hotel to the terminal. So it bypasses all of this traffic. You'll then enter the drop-off point, which is marked off similar to an airport with each section having a different number. For GoPort, we were dropped off at station one. Here, porters will take your checked luggage right away, and you should have received luggage tags in the mail prior to your trip. The washrooms here are located in the parking garage just across the street, which is controlled by traffic controllers, so crossing the road is not too difficult. As we walk towards the terminal, we had a great view of the ship, and the excitement really starts building. As you approach the terminal, you'll see different lines in increments of 15 minutes for different time slots. We were about 15 minutes early and they still let us through. If you are too early, you likely won't see your line yet and will probably have to wait. Though from what I saw, there was a lot of standing room in front of the terminal for you to wait. One thing to note is that it's very similar to airport security, so that means no liquids. We had to pour out our bottle of water in a sewer drain, which is just on the right here. Once you are inside and make it through this line, you'll check in at a check-in desk and they will verify your passports and identification and give you wristbands for your kids. Note that you are allowed two bottles of wine and I believe you're also allowed to bring in beer, but you might want to double check that, but you're not allowed to bring in hard liquor. Also, they don't allow for electrical power bars as this could be a fire hazard. Once you're past the check-in and the security, you'll have to take the escalators or the elevator up to the main waiting area. Here, there are washrooms, guest services, and many picture opportunities. There is also a model of one of their cruise ships with an AR experience. It's kind of like a game where you have to find stuff and it helps pass a little bit of time. When your number is called, you'll head to the line to enter the huge mouse entrance. Once through another check, you'll cross the main gangway and into the main hall, which puts you on level three. Before entering the main hall, you'll give your family name to an announcer, who will announce to everyone in the hall your family name, and you'll walk in in grand entrance fashion. Be sure to pick up your Wonder Wand for your kids or yourself if you want, just by the main stage. Please 
He's won the ball in the Chang family. During the embarkation period, you'll have the opportunity to explore all of the kids' areas of the ship, which are normally blocked off for adults. Check out these cool hand-washing stations. Throughout the kids' areas, there are many playstations that can only be activated by the kids' wristbands. In this Star Wars game, your child will activate with their wristband and their name will appear on screen. Then they will need to grab one of the nearby iPads to scan the QR code. The game consists of going around the Star Wars space and hunting for creatures and doing interactive things like feeding, monitoring, and more. The game just lets you play one mission at a time before having to return the iPad and reactivate it. When using the elevators, they have these special touchless buttons that can, you can either press or just hover your finger over for about two seconds. The problem is that if you stand too close to them, then you can accidentally press all of the buttons at the same time and then have the elevator, elevator stop on every floor. I can see why they might have installed touchless buttons during the pandemic and it's likely just a few programming updates that will prevent uh, these minor glitches. Another thing with the elevators is the waiting area. It's kind of like playing elevator roulette, as you never really know which elevator will open. And if you're standing too far away from the one that does open, someone else might walk in before you, or you just might not see it. It's also hard to judge which elevator to stand in front, since sometimes these elevators skip floors. I believe this is because they have a sensor that can skip the floor if the elevator is too full to accept any more passengers. They probably should install one of those newer on-demand type elevator systems where you press your desired floor in the waiting area and then it tells you which elevator to stand in front of, though I'm sure such a change would not be cheap. During embarkation day, the hallways will be very busy. So keep this in mind if you have a stroller and carry-on in tow. It will likely take you twice as long to get through the halls. Also, you will find your checked-in baggage waiting just outside your room. At some point later in the afternoon, probably around 3.45, after everyone is boarded, they will have what's called a muster drill. This is sometimes referred to as a lifeboat drill or a boat drill and is basically a safety exercise that is conducted by the crew of the ship prior to embarking. Expect to wait a while for the elevators after this drill, as everyone will be headed to the top decks for the sail away party. You can always explore the floor of your buster drill for an extra 15 minutes to wait for the crowds to clear, or you can just take the stairs if you can. Here's a shot of the sail away party. It's really a special moment when the ship blows its horn and sets off to sail, so you won't want to miss this. If you're trying to capture the moment on video, start taking out your phone when the cruise entertainment director comes on stage. He's the guy in a little white uniform. Most nights they will have a live show which you'll want to get to at least 30 minutes ahead of time if you want to get your pick of seats. Any later and you'll likely have to split up a larger party or sit further back or off to the sides of the theater. They have a strict no saving seats policy. If you do save seats and people are looking for some, first the ushers will come by and tell you that you can't save the seats or people will just take them as it's brightly broadcasted that there are no saving of seats. Um, at one point I actually saw them play this game where everyone had to stand up and shift towards the center of the theater. One night I saw a man get very angry when a couple took two of the seats that he was saving. He yelled a little bit but they didn't move and that's pretty much all he could have done. Otherwise he would have risked drawing the attention of the attendants. On to excursions now. On the day of your excursion, they will have you meet in one of the restaurants or theaters. You will be grouped with everyone else going on your excursion and led outside of the boat. Through deck one, where someone from the excursion will then take you the rest of the way. 
Note that it's deck 1 and not deck 3, which is used for embarkation and debarkation. Our walk from the cruise ship to the excursion boat was a slow 10 minute walk. It's slow because you have to walk in a sort of single file as there are a lot of people in the port from all the other cruise ships. Upon your return, they will offer you a cold towel and a fruit-infused water. Note that you can only bring back wine onto the ship. I had bought two bottles of rum that they confiscated and later returned to me on debarkation day. If they do confiscate something, you'll get a receipt that looks something like this. During your rotational dining, it's not really necessary to get there early to fall in line, as all the tables are assigned previously anyways. Some of those that were seated around us in the same rotation would even show up 30 minutes late. Here's a picture of one of the towel creatures they created one night. They make one each day and it's really fun to see which one you'll get. You can even hop onto your cruise's Facebook group if you've joined one to see what other towel creatures people are getting. On the morning of Castaway Key, we got to deck one, the ship exit area, a little early as we wanted to get some time on the beach before it got too crazy. Here you can see us waiting on the stairs that are going down from level two to level one. A crew member was telling people getting off directly off the elevators on deck one to take the elevator back up to level two and wait up the stairs. If you have a small child, I recommend bringing your stroller as it is a very long walk to the beach and there are several character meet and greets along the way. So though you can take the tram, you might want to snap a few pictures with the characters before the crowds get there. Let's go, man. The beach is quite amazing in, in the early morning. One disadvantage, however, of getting there so early is that they don't serve food until 11.30 a.m. So maybe order some room service and take that with you.
On the same night as Castaway Key, we had our pirate night. It's always fun to dress up and some people really go all out. We will be sure to upgrade our costumes bit by bit as we go on more cruises. On the same night of pirate night, they had the fireworks. Unfortunately, they were at 10.30 p.m. and my son was already sleeping by then, so he had to miss it. It would have been nice if they were a little bit earlier. On your second last night, you will be given tip envelopes to give to your service team in person. These are in addition to the automatic gratuity that they charge. Here on this breakdown, you can see that your cleaner and main server get the most at about 33% each. Then your secondary server and head server get 25% and 9% respectively. Here are some nice Mickey waffles from 1923 breakfast. Here's Joyful Sweets where we bought some gelato and uh, one of these chocolate balls which has like marshmallows and candy inside. This was my favorite dessert of the trip. It was like a homemade chocolate bar and um, I believe it was at Arendelle, though I think they have it at other restaurants. During the cruise, they will have helpful videos playing to inform you of what to expect next. Here's a video that they were showing the night before deparkation to explain how it works. On this night, remember to fill out your common cards and also to return your child activity band before the um, uh, child center closes. This is the grand hall on deparkation day. You can see people are already waiting down on deck three with their luggages. This is for express checkout and this is uh, in case you didn't um, check in any luggage and you have to leave the ship to catch a flight or something. On deparkation day I had to go pick up my confiscated alcohol at this bar here on deck five. Then I went to return my child's activity bracelet to guest services as I forgot to return it to the activity center the night before debarkation. Then I headed for the debarkation breakfast, which is the same restaurant as your last night's rotation. It's also here that you drop off your common card. You will then wait here until they call your section, which is the luggage tag you received the night before and attached to your check bags. Ours was Grey Minnie Mouse. For debarkation, you pretty much go out the same way you came in. I wonder what's over in the theater. Here I am, circling around through the Bayou Cafe, and then joining the queue to exit. As you exit, it's also another opportunity to drop off your comment card. You need to go wash room?
When going to the lower level of the port terminal, you end up in a large room with all your luggage. If you have a lot of bags and young kids, I, rem I recommend getting a porter to help you out. You just need to leave them a tip. All of your luggage will be in a section that matches the luggage tags that they gave you the night before and ordered by room. So if you see one of your bags, the rest will be in the same area. As you drive away, you'll have one last chance to look at the ship before you start dreaming about your next cruise.